Is that? Oh, yeah. It is. Yes, it is. Um, does anyone have any questions or comments? Yeah, no, comments. Okay. Uh, thank you. <laughs> well, um, okay. okay. Yeah. Well, very simply, you know, it was my first film. Um, I was a very young filmmaker, and I loved Jad Farron, half Japanese, and the music and the art. And there was a really exciting battle going on, a war, but between independent music and corporate music. And uh, it was a big part of the dialogue back then. So um, I thought it was great to put a camera on Jad when he was creating and film him doing those songs. And I think Jad and those songs still really hold up and you can see, you know, you can still get tingles when Jad sings a certain line in, in a moment like Red Dress or um, I'll Change My Style when he kisses the guitar and takes a great guitar solo. And those are really great moments. So I was really glad to just be preserving, you know, an important part of what I felt was uh, an independent music scene. So that was like a big goal back then. And I was still learning to make movies. I was just trying to, you know, but that fight on screen of corporate versus independent, which uh, ripples into our life besides art and culture. And um, it was interesting. I, I can tell, you know, it was many, many years before I made The Devil and Daniel Johnston, so it was interesting to look back at this very, very early uh, effort. But I, I still had fun watching Chad uh, do his thing. like 500 copies of it and it wasn't super expensive to do and I, I thought we had a good shot at recouping our money I was kind of surprised that it would go into a second pressing and that would lead to other records and and that we did as much as we did after that um, but um, yeah what when we my brother and I pressed it I, I thought it would be just a single run of 500. Uh, what do you think today uh, uh, of uh, the music business? I mean, the indie scene and the corporate scene. And what do you think uh, that's going to be in the future? Oh, it's, I'm surprised that record companies can make any kind of money at all. Because there's, with the internet, there's so much music that's free. Um, I mean, not just people downloading without paying, but there's great radio stations available for uh, streaming on the internet. And uh, I mean, there's just so much there that, that um, why people would go out and spend money uh, when there's, when you don't have to. 
Um, so I'm, I'm kind of surprised that there even still is a, 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 a business. Um, and uh, I, I think it's going to get harder and harder for um, musicians. Um, I mean, musicians, I, I think, will, it'll be more important for them to do uh, live shows. I was just saying, back when Jad, I mean, I came to it very late. Jad had already logged 15 years of being like a pirate, of being a total rebel against this giant industry. It was really fascinating to watch Jad, who was like a true pioneer, and David, and you know, to, they were so prolific. They just kept releasing so many records, and that, and you can't imagine they were able to do it, but they did it. It was a, it was a, it was a heroic act back then to do what they had done, and. Besides the act of doing it being heroic, the, the product of it was heroic because it was so incredibly brilliant, each one, and so incredibly fun. Uh, they wrote such incredible material. So um, when it was just about to change and punk rock had become post-punk and indie, it was just a, a, a fascinating time in our culture before it all changed, before that last wave happened with Alternative and, and uh, Nirvana hit and then this little secret world we had wasn't a secret anymore. And you know, it was not ironic, you know, that Kurt Cobain, his, one of his favorite artists was Jad Farron, half Japanese, as well as Daniel Johnston. And he had half Japanese open for him on his last tour, the In Utero tour, it was very interesting. And, for us people who loved half Japanese, we were like, well, you know, Nirvana should be opening for half Japanese. This is backwards for us. But, you know, we were thrilled for Jad, and it was pretty cool to see Jad getting, you know, through this large mouthpiece out to a larger world. I was glad to give them a break. <laughs> and you did. Yes. Did you really have the Stooges in MC5 in high school? Well, I, I was kind of young for that. Uh, my brother is a couple years older, and he, he went to see the Stooges in MC5. Um, not at his high school, but at uh, other high schools. I think that it still holds up. Uh, I was, I, I think Jeff did a, a fine job. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, I don't know. It's 
sometimes could be hard to watch yourself. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it's me, but it's so long ago that it's kind of not me. Yes. Euh, euh, comment se passe la tournée Ils sont en tournée mondiale, c'est le début de la, la fin de la tournée. C'est euh... well, it's the end of the tour. Um, we just did uh, four shows with half Japanese, and I did uh, two shows as a duo with the drummer of uh, half Japanese, and then I also had an exhibition opening in uh, Nice. And tomorrow I go back home. À Dour. C'est la fin de la tournée, il a fait quatre grandes dates là, avec un Japanese, deux dates seules, il a fait une, une, une exposition aussi et il repart, en, il repart demain à Spécial. En fait, on l'a détourné un peu, hein, comme je vois, il a joué dans le coin, il joue avec les États-Unis, grâce à Jeff, il a un peu détourné de Jeff. Il était censé repartir aux États-Unis euh, hier ou avant-hier. I think, you know, with, with half Japanese and you know, I was so young, it was just so much fun to have cameras and lights and a small crew and just go out and, and film a band creating who, and I just, who I love so much and I just wanted to share with people. And um, that was just a great experience that, you know, the film was even in focus and that the sound was recorded well. It was like an achievement. It was a struggle. It was very, very difficult. And um, it was just a great journey to share Jad and half Japanese with people. With Devil and Daniel Johnston, it was, you know, 10 years later and um, it became much more about telling stories and honing the craft more, but also sharing the love I have for Daniel Johnston and his music and his art. So it, I think it's just evolving from a storytelling point of view. Two questions, actually. Uh, I was uh, maybe I'm wrong, but uh, when I was watching uh, the first uh, um, sound you have made with your brother, etc., I, I was wondering if you were uh, aware of what Jonathan Richman was doing at the same time, or almost at the same time. Well, I I, I had um, read in a in an interview of um, Jonathan Richman that was in Interview Magazine. And uh, I, I was very impressed uh, with what uh, Jonathan uh, was saying. 
Um, but it, it wasn't until, I think, 1977 that I, I first heard the Modern Lovers. Um, but prior to that, in um, like 74, I, I was reading about the Modern Lovers and, and I, I was very interested. You, you covered Modern Lovers, Chad, a couple times. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm a big fan. Great band. Yeah, because I can see a uh, lot of similarities. My second question is very simple. How did you get in touch with uh, Mo Tucker? Uh, well, some friends of mine um, had a magazine called um, What Goes On, uh, which is um, a magazine about the Velvet Underground. And they went to uh, do an interview with Mo and gave Mo a cassette tape of half, half Japanese. And uh, Mo really liked the, uh, the songs that she heard. And I started to correspond with Mo. Um, so we became friends. You know, Chad Mo made Chad and Mo made some great records together. There was an early record called Between Meals. Yes, right. And then um, Mo Tucker's solo album, which is still available, uh, Life in Exile After Abdication, uh, is really a collaboration with Chad and, and other mem uh, members of Sonic Youth and Daniel Johnson. It's a fantastic record. And, uh, and then we, we also did an EP called uh, Mo Jad Kate Berry. And the album they were recording in the film, Fire in the Sky, which Mo is the producer on. Thank you very much. <laughs>